what I want to talk about here, okay, uh, as we went into the break, I did a search that was more detailed, like more of us are doing, and even if you yourself are not searching this specific, this, the web browsers are getting pretty sophisticated in that maybe I didn't put San Diego in my search term, but the web browsers relay the information of my location to the web browser. You may not have realized that, but that does happen commonly. Google is explicitly saying at the very bottom here, kind of nondescript, San Diego. It realizes I'm in San Diego, so it'll try to give me local results. We'll talk about dealing with that. But the point is, we're making more detailed searches. This is the long tail keyword strategy. You might not have ever heard of that term, but this is what we're engaging in. Long tail keyword strategy. Let me make a simple little drawing here to explain why it's called long tail keyword strategy. So I'm just going to draw uh, very simply here x and y axes. Um, on the bottom is the keyword. Along the, the x-axis is the keyword, and then along the y-axis is the frequency. So then we can draw a, uh, a curve that looks something like this. Ignore those bumps. It's hard to draw with a mouse. But it's basically a steady curve downwards like that. I'll try one more time. OK, close enough. So something like this. What does this mean in relation to x and y? There are keywords that have a high frequency of usage. It could be a keyword like restaurant. That is that everyone is using, and therefore you're a needle in a haystack, a very small needle in a very big haystack. This keyword has a very high frequency. It's used a lot. It might be searched for a lot, but it's used a lot by companies. Then we've got maybe over here, restaurants in San Diego. Still a lot of searches, still a relatively big needle in a haystack. Then over here, affordable Italian food restaurants in Chula Vista less competition, less people using that keyword. Yes, there may be 10 Italian food restaurants in this one block, let's say, but there are less people using a particular keyword out here. That's the long tail. I suppose because this is, if you fully draw out the chart, this is the tail of a cow. There's the tail, there's the rump, and then there's the rest of the cow, obviously. So the long tail keywords is what we're going to be concerned with nowadays. We're not going to optimize our site for restaurant. You're going to be a needle in a haystack. You're not going to get found. We're going to optimize our site for something more like authentic Italian food or family style Italian food takeout restaurant. You know, much more specific because that's what people are searching for. That's what I'm going to ask. Cortana, my phone, I'm going to say, what's a nearby Italian food restaurant with good takeout? I'm going to talk to it like natural language, like long tail keywords, without even knowing that that's a long tail keyword. So this is our long tail keyword strategy. If you'd like, I'm going to save this in the network folder so that you can get a copy. But that's our idea here that um, we're going to focus on the long tail over here. Um, there, is a, there is a balance, though, that we have to do what's specific enough, but what's too specific. If I'm so specific that I get very few, very little competition, 
there's a certain point where that's because no one's searching, no one cares, or no one has thought about searching with those keywords. So that, that is a balancing act that we have to do. And we can do research. We can use the search engines to do research to see what words work and what words are overused and what words don't. And as we do that research, it can also tell us for our edification how much does that keyword cost? How much is someone paying to use that keyword? If they're paying a lot, that often means there's a lot of competition, so it could be more of a high frequency word that we might not want. If we do the research and see that some keywords have a lower monetary value, that means less people are searching for them, they're part of the long tail, I could work, I could be found more effectively with those words. Maybe just to fully flesh it out here. Yeah, just mentioned the word cost. Are you saying that there is a cost? If you engage in pay-per-click campaigns, there is. But in this class, we're talking about the, the free stuff as much as possible. So that's uh, to further flesh that out. Um, generic, specific, long tail. Yes. The search engine is often indexing the site. Is it indexing family style, the whole word, the whole sentence, or part of the sentence? It's looking at your website and analyzing every single word and seeing the variations because you may be using the word family in one part. Maybe you use family dash style in another part. Maybe you use family style without a dash. Maybe you use for f our style is for families. So the search engine is looking at everything about your site and forming a picture based on that. So also we are not literally going to then use this long tail keyword and do keyword stuffing. Keyword stuffing was we had restaurant, we're going to put restaurant everywhere. We are going to develop long tail keyword strategy, but we're still not going to do stuffing. We're still not going to literally then put family style Italian food restaurant everywhere in our site. We're not going to get family style Italian restaurant eastlake.com. We're not going to get that name on the title and in the footer everywhere. We're going to use it more organically and we'll see how. So. Yes. If I just search for Italian restaurants, will this show up? Will this particular client, for example? Yes. Italian restaurant? It may or may not for a variety of factors. It may because of location, because again the search engines know. No more, and we can try it. I'm gonna do Italian restaurant. Just Italian restaurants. And then there's a bunch of results, Cucina Urbana, Arrivederci, Yelp, of course. So a lot of generic notifications, blogs and such. If I do maybe authentic Italian restaurants near, well, let's do uh, Chula Vista. Number one result is my client. <laughs> Second is also the client, but on Yelp. And uh, the general, just Italian in Chula Vista, photos, well, look at that, they got the whole call-out box now, the Actually, client right, right there. Yeah. yeah, not automatically, with no, effort. Nice. <laughs> no, no payment, no payment of pay-per-click, but payment for our services. Yes, Ed. I noticed number one on with this particular client, no. We the only thing that we did for Yelp with this client was claim the claim the profile and put in the correct times of operation and a couple photos and that sort of thing. And then basically the food speaks for itself. People then go and have a great experience and give it a great review. If there's any negative reviews, then we go in and answer the reviews. So minimal 
in that aspect of over promoting Yelp. I think they have on the window, you know, rate us on Yelp, but nothing like, you know, please give us five stars and you'll get a free meatball. You know, nothing like that. <laughs> yes. When you respond to that feedback on Yelp, the negative feedback, does that can that manipulate your uh, your star rating? It can in a positive way, and actually Yelp wants you to do that. Yelp wants you to deal with the positive and the negative, especially, but not in a way like please. Uh, you know, please give us a new, please give us five stars and you'll get a free dinner. Nothing that obviously bribery, more like we are sorry you had a bad experience, come back again, we'll make it better. You know, nothing specifically that you're going to get something for something, but just like, you know, give us another chance. We had a bad day, that, that server has been talked to, you know. And then out of their own volition, they might then come back and give you a positive they might change it from three stars up to four stars, maybe from one star up to five stars, who knows. But you're answering it in a more organic, non-bribe kind of way. Uh, so the point of this is um, long tail keyword, authentic Italian restaurant Chula Vista. Those keywords we're going to use throughout all of our endeavors, not over and over on the keywords of the site, of the meta tag, of the title, of the footer. And not always exactly in that way, because this is, the, this is the thing, it's a moving target. The search engines say, this used to work, now it doesn't. This works, but do it this way. And they're going to change things. They change this all the time. Uh, Google being changed their algorithm all the time, but really it comes back to content. So if judiciously within the site, we use those keywords. Okay, part of the slogan itself is authentic, delicious Italian food. Okay, but then we're not going to put it all over, uh, over and over and over every single spot we get. Yeah, this is authentic there again, but then we also put it on the Twitter profile biography. Uh, we mention it once on the Yelp. When we tweet something brand new or put something brand new on, on Facebook, we might use that or variations. It doesn't always have to literally be that's not going to be your false idol that you're going to be worshipping all the time, that phrase. We're actually going to talk about we need to develop three, five, ten variations, and all of those we're going to use throughout all of our endeavors. I have an activity that we'll do in a handout. The theory of it is it's not just going to be relying on one set of keywords. We're going to develop three, five, ten of them to further tell the search engines this is what we're about family style cooking, highly rated on Zagat. You know, we have all of these different keywords that we're going to use throughout our projects, throughout our profiles and endeavors. And the content itself also. So, that's the idea, long tail keyword strategy. In order for us to figure this out, these keywords, as I said, I, I said, well, we need to think of five of them. Yes, we need to fully think of a large plan and strategy for all of this. It's not just, if you, if you take any other class and they're just talking about use the, do this on your meta tags and then do this in your footer, well, do what? I don't know my keywords. I don't know what I'm, what I'm trying to accomplish online. So. SEO, SEM. We have to have a full picture. That's what this class will be about. So I've got a handout for you. Uh, you can print it later. I turned off the printer. But let me remind you where our handouts are at. You want to go to your desktop. Go to the main desktop of the computer. Uh, if you don't know how to get there quickly, you can click on that little icon in the bottom right corner. It's like a little square, I think. Click on that. That will minimize everything to go to the desktop. And then double click computer, computer window, top left. There's a network location where I'm going to pass documents to you. Network location drive Z, as in zebra. Open the network location folder. Scroll down and you'll find my folder called Campus SEO. And I have a couple files there. You can drag the long tail graphic I just drew to your desktop if you want. 
But what you really want is the client company profile. Drag that to your desktop. Don't double click it. Drag it to your desktop first. And then close it here. If you try to open it from my network folder, you will not be able to edit it. This is locked for you. So that's why you want to drag a copy to your desktop so that you can edit it. You can print this if you want and fill it out by hand, but I'm giving it to you as a Word document so you can fill it out on the computer. If you don't have access to it and you have a laptop, bring your flash drive over and I'll give you a copy on your flash drive. Richard? Yes. Will that be there next week too? Yes. Thank you. So did everyone drag a copy of that client company profile? Anyone need a little help? Go ahead and open it and let's discuss it. You can close your network folder once you've copied that file over. I'm going to close it so other people can have access to that network file, network location. This one you do have to get from our network here. It's not up on the website. And so this is a, a simple two-page document. This is something that our company does for real, for real clients. Because when we get hired for a company to do SEO or social media or anything, we have to, as much as possible, become experts in that company. Because obviously the people that work there, obviously the owner of the company and the founders and such know about their company. It's their company. So now we're a third party that wants to and claims to do something good for them. So we need to know as much about that company as possible. So there's a discovery phase early on. There's this phase where after they hire us, sign contracts and such, we spend some time getting to know as much as we can about that company so we can do a good job by that company. So this is one variation on that very first discovery phase activity. So you can, you can fill this out as much as you want now. This, you're not going to fill this out and turn it in. I'm not going to grade it. This is not a kind of a class where we have homework or you turn in assignments and all of that stuff. This is you get tangible things out of this. There's no grade at the end of the course. There's no certificate. You get something out of this course that you can apply directly to your businesses. If you would like me to look at this, great. Fill it out, and when you have time, we will look at it together. But as an overview, there's a space for your company name, for your name, for the date, because this may change. After you do this the first time, and then a month from now, as you get more knowledge, you may fill it out again and then have more understanding. The point of this, for me, as the company that's going to do SEO for you, is that I understand your company. For you, it's that you understand your company, so that you know what to write about on Twitter, what to fill out on a profile on Yelp, uh, what keywords, what long tail keywords you're going to figure out. So you may think, yeah, Italian food restaurant Chula Vista, done. No, you have to think again, three to five to ten of those. So by filling out these things, that helps to define that. <laughs> company name. What is the name of your company? Why did you choose the name? Does it have a special meaning or story? For example, my web design company will be vic.co, pronounced vic.co, and it comes from my name. So if you simply write here, John's Bakery, that's okay, but if I was giving you a grade, that would be a C. You want to explain, well, why is it called John's Web Design Company? Well, John is actually my grandfather, who I learned graphic design from on his old um, drafting table. And now I've taken that into web design. Perfect. Write that down, because that's going to help you with other aspects of your company to define that. You know, third-generation graphic designer, johnsdesigns.com. That's the things that will help you craft this message, figure out the long-tail keywords. Why did you choose a name? Does it have a special meaning? <clears throat> Again, you don't have to fill all this out right now. Just let's think about it. Tagline. Think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines, like, I'm loving it, it's in the game, just do it. Why do they stick? Your tagline should also be a concise statement about your company, if its name is not immediately understandable. PMD Interactive, I don't know what they do based on that name, but based on the tagline, online marketing solutions. Okay, now PMD Interactive makes sense because of that sentence, and it's got a keyword in there, online marketing. For example, a great company for your great website. 
this is obviously an art and a science. This is obviously people get paid millions of dollars to think of these taglines. Do you think that I'm loving it from McDonald's fell out of the sky? They had a room full of people thinking about that and paid them millions of dollars. Do you think just do it really came out of the blue? Um, all of these taglines that are always evolving, like what's that one company that their tagline was? Um, the taste of a new generation. Pepsi. That was one of their older taglines. They've got a new one now. But it always evolves, and it takes time and effort, and there's an art and a science to this. At the very least, if your company's name is esoteric, if everyone doesn't know what does PMD Directive mean, your tagline better explain that in one sentence, and you can throw in a keyword there. So, a great company for your great website, big.com. What's that word again for non-descriptive? Esoteric. Esoteric? Mm -hmm. That just means sort of uh, pretty much hidden knowledge. Someone doesn't know what it actually means. Or not a lot of people know what something means when it's esoteric. <laughs> That's the paradox of it. About us. Write a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What is it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? Why are you in this business? How will you make the company a success? Notice those are the classic journalistic who, why, what, when, where, why, how, etc. What makes a good story? You fill all, all of those things in. What makes a good about us for your company? Fill all of those in. As many as you can, because again, all of these things are informing you, giving you ideas of your long tail keywords what people might be searching for, you think about it in those terms as well. What would people be searching for? If I'm thinking of these terms that I, that I want people to find me by, that might not be what people are currently searching for. But let's say I've got three long tail keywords set up. One of them is the one I want to be found by, but two of them are the ones that seem to work, that people seem to be searching by. Great, I'm going to use all three of those to build a larger picture uh, to get found online. As I fill more of that stuff out, I can then also use this stuff when I create my Twitter profile. I have 160 characters there to write a biography. I create a Facebook account and it asks me about my company. I've got it written down. These answers will help you fill out your biography on various sites. And again, your content is what the search engines are going to care about. When you're, when uh, Bing searched and found Facebook and found that in the Facebook I've got certain keywords there that I maybe didn't use on Twitter, that helps paint a more complete picture of what my company is about. And that, therefore, it might have gotten ranked on the search engine. Mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. This is one of the most... This could be one of the most... Uh, along with the vision statement, when we get to that. The mission statement could be one of the most prosaic things that you write, one of the things that is most artistic and poetic, because easily my mission statement could have been here. Vic.co wants to build websites. Okay, that makes sense. But notice I've thrown in here this flowery language, and I've thrown in here various other psychological things related to marketing to try to resonate with people to say I want them as my marketer even though I have 99 other choices. Beautiful web design. Discerning clients. Take notice. So love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most important and profitable and well-known tech companies out there. And usually their advertising is about more of a, of, a, of a lifestyle and the people rather than the technology. When you see a classic iPhone commercial, you're seeing laughing people at the beach, 
a child running to their parent, grandparents communicating with grandkids across the country, all through an Apple device. All through that brand new iPhone for $600. They are creating a culture. They're trying to reach an audience. And so this is part of the art and the science of marketing. It is a big thing to think about. I simply want to get hired as a web designer. But I want to get hired by people that will care about a beautiful design. That often does not go hand in hand with a good website. A good website maybe works, but doesn't look very good. And maybe that client cares more that it works than that it works and it looks good. That's why I said discerning clients, clients that care about good web design and user experience and all of that. This comes to the bigger question of why. Why would someone hire this web designer instead of that web designer? This realtor instead of that realtor? This band instead of that band? Why? That's a very large topic there to talk about. But what I would recommend is there's a great book on that. Literally, start, uh, literally called Start With Why. This author, Simon Sinek. Uh, how great leaders inspire everyone to take action. Okay, it really also relates to marketing and companies and all of that because it gives real-world examples of companies and leaders throughout uh, history. In that, the short answer is you. They're answering a question of why. Why would I care? Why would I buy your product? Why would I go with you than someone else? Because I can draw another thing here. We've got these. We've got these circles. We've got these three concentric circles. The outermost circle is what? It's kind of hard to read. Um, I'll just do it in black. Okay, there's what on the outside. The next level in is how. And then the inner circle, guess what that is? Why? So any company most likely can answer the what. Web design is the what. My company sells web design services. Their company sells web design services. Every company sells web design ser services. That's the what. What are you selling? What are you promoting? What's your nonprofit? What? The next level in is how. How do you accomplish good web design? So perhaps in my company we accomplish web design using WordPress because we feel that's the best way. It's got the most features. Another company might say we do web design through Joomla because look at our clientele and the results. So okay, how is a little bit more fine-tuned. That helps you weed out the appropriate company because everyone's a web designer but I need a WordPress web designer so I've cut, <coughs> out, I've cut out several people. I still have a lot of a pool to deal with of web designers that use WordPress. But innermost level, the hardest one, why would I hire a particular company? This is where you make the personal connection. This is where I meet with a client, my company meets with the client and tells them, I graduated from UCSD, Patricia from San Diego State, Sharna was also at UCSD, we're all local San Diego college graduates, we've lived all our lives here in San Diego, your company is San Diego based, we understand the San Diego culture and how to sell your widget to the San Diego audience. We live here, we care about here, um, we live and breathe, we are San Diego, your company is San Diego. We want to work for your company. That's the why. That New York company might make amazing results, but they don't know the San Diego culture. Maybe they have one person that is in charge of the Western market. The West's a big place. And so the why is why us directly 
can we make a connection? Why would you, the client, make a connection with my company to hire us? And that's the hardest thing to answer. That's why there's a whole book about it. Question. Um, does that relate to this company client profile? What you were saying, or is this a discussion about the company? Yeah, right here. here. Pretty much right here. This is part of a mission statement. You're going to write in your mission statement, I'm a lawyer, I want to get found. Why would you care? Well, literally for DOI people, for why? A little bit more deeper. Why? Because you've had, maybe your own family has had troubles with the law, and you got into law because you wanted to help your family never go through, you wanted to help another family never go through what your family went through. That's the why. Right there. Because you don't get people in trouble. Yes. Especially with unjust laws. And when alcohol is involved. So there's that book, very affordable, don't you think? Nine dollars, zero dollars if you get the free Audible um, uh, audio cassette version. And then this author, Simon Sinek, he's pretty uh, famous in this realm. And if you search for Start With Why, you'll probably see a couple of his free videos out there about this concept. This is a whole big can of worms that I'm not going to get into a lot into. But the concept is, again, why would your company be a good fit for the client? Why would your nonprofit matter or resonate with the people you're trying to get donations from? It's a hard question to answer. That's why it's in the deepest level here. What is easy? Everyone can be a nonprofit. Uh, how is a little more complicated. And then why? I think this is called like the golden circles or something. Golden circles. I'll put it in the network folder also, but it's in that book. You can watch his video. And uh, yeah, you might think, well, I just came in this class to learn how to rank number one on Google. Yes, but it's a big puzzle to do that. And that's why if we do this for a real client, we have to answer all of these as deeply as possible so that we can do the best job for that company. Related to why and resonating with clients, we have values. What are some keywords that your company believes in? For example, orderliness, teamwork, discipline, etc. And there's a link there. Because these big companies like McDonald's and Nike and Starbucks and such, don't you think they spend millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to define all of this? Why is Starbucks the biggest coffee company in the world? You may never want to step foot in Starbucks. You love Pete's Coffee or Pike Place Coffee, or the, the other ones. But you cannot deny that Starbucks is world famous, very profitable. They define coffee, for better or for worse. And they have a clientele that swears by them, visits them every day, and spends $20 every day on their coffees. Well, because there's something about the personality, the values, the mission statement about them that resonates with people. Yes, for some people, they're, up, they're on the road, so I'll stop by. But for many more people, I love what they're doing in Africa. I love that their coffee, I can get it single sourced. I love that they contribute to NGOs, you know, the values. So what are some keywords and values that your company believes in and that your potential customers and clients would believe in? That's why searching authentic Italian restaurants, people care about that. I can go to Olive Garden, I can go to other big chain Italian food places, Godfather's Pizza, or I can go to an Italian Sicilian style Italian food place. <coughs> Personality. Think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How would she, he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. The point of this is that when you get to the part of social media, how are you going to carry yourself in social media? If I'm a financial planner, I don't really want my financial planner to be fun and spontaneous with my money. <laughs> I want them to be stoic and well-researched and uh, serious. That's the personality that I'm getting across on my online endeavors. If I am a surf shop in PV, perfect. This is the kind of clientele that I'm going to attract. 
um, you know, spontaneous or laid back um, people because that's how I'm going to tweet, that's how I'm going to post on Facebook, that's how I'm going to post to Instagram, that's how I'm going to use Pinterest. So this personality, you think about it also in terms of the, of the concept, I think I have it in another handout, of personas. Who are you trying to attract directly? Um, if you're trying to attract a particular clientele, it's very useful to think about concrete personalities. Someone that lives in San Diego that enjoys X, Y, and Z. That's who I'm going for. That's the personality I'm going for because my company is like that and we're a good fit. Further helping to perhaps hone in on the why. And then just to have it all written down, fundamentals, list the company address, website, email, contact address, and any social media profiles that already exist. You may also list social media profiles you would like to set up in the future. So you want to put your web address, do you have a regular street address, are you at a physical location, do you have some sort of contact number, a fax number, you write all of that down so that you have it in a central location and you need to access it when, when necessary. If you currently then have a Facebook, you write down the Facebook address. If then you, after learning more in this class and other classes, decide, I need also, I need to get on this new thing called Periscope. So I put it down here. Eventually set up Periscope. So just fundamental stuff to write down about your company. Any questions on this document? Okay, so as you work on it, it might uh, make more sense or you might have more questions. Happy to answer them, of course. Question? What are you writing about on your blog? That's probably, that's what I'll be working on coming up with. But um, would anything change for a blog? Compared to Not quite, because, okay, company name. Are you going to use your name? Are you going to use a pen name? Are you going to use a, a, a company name? So that still applies there. If you're using your own name, great. Your name is your company. That's your entity, your brand. Still applies. Uh, tagline, yeah, when you figure out what you're going to write about, can you, cons can you make that into one concise sentence, what you're writing about? Let's say I'm writing all about technology. So I could be writing uh, top, tech, top Tech Tips Weekly. That's my tagline uh, about us. You know, that's, that, of course, applies. If you're your own self, you know, write as much as you can about this. Um, why are you writing this blog? I'm going to write about technology, so does everyone else. But why is my more important than everyone else's? Maybe because I focus on certain aspects of technology and education, let's say. So I'm being specific in that mission statement. In my blogging, I probably have some of these values that I would care to write about, and therefore other people care to read. My personality. How, how am I writing? Am I using slang? Am I using proper conjunctions and all of that? Am I, is it a stream of conscious kind of writing? Academic? And then, of course, am I only having my WordPress blog or do I also eventually want to have Twitter? The answer is yes, because you also want to publicize your blog. You've written something great, but you also want to promote it on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or something. So you write down where you currently exist and where you might want to also be found at. So all of this stuff could still definitely apply to just about everything. And if you need specifications, we can talk during the, the break. Any other general questions about the document? Okay, so... I'm going to close that. I would say that if if you if you well, I, I need to remind you that is these computers because they're public computers a, a bunch of classes are taught here all day long all week long 
these computers have a software called Deep Freeze. See this little polar bear, polar bear on the bottom right corner looking at you. That's Deep Freeze. And so what that means is this computer is, is frozen. It's, it's locked. When you turn it off and turn it back on, everything that you've done to the computer will reset. Go back to our factory settings. So if you wrote this amazing document and left it on our desktop, and come back next week, it'll be gone. As soon as you restart our computers, they go back to our factory settings. Deep freeze. So anything you want to save today, you need to make sure you take it on a flash drive or email it to yourself. If you need to know how to email it to yourself, see me during the break. But uh, remember to take any documents that I, that I might give you if you want them. They're not going to be on the website. When you ask for the link, that's only the lectures. These files are on, in this room unless you take them with you. I'm going to provide you another document. If you go back to the network folder, Campus SEO, if you go back to the network folder, I added the golden circle graphic if you want it, and I also added a new PDF here, Campus SEO 1, Long Tail Strategy. I'm going to give you a few documents that are numbered to do in a specific order. To drag that also to your desktop, we'll talk about this and we'll get started with it. Uh, again, this is not an assignment that you have to do. But obviously, I would recommend you do everything that I give you because you're going to apply this directly to your online endeavors. So drag that long tail document to your desktop and we'll look at it. I'll turn the printer on a little later. Did everyone get a copy of that PDF? Which one? What's that? Which PDF? The one I just added, the one called Campus SEO One Long Tail Strategy. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's open up that document. These are the these exercises right here. What does your brand offer? Nowadays, search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You will have a better chance of being found with authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. So it's about your long tail of keywords. If you understand your niche better, your category, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define your long tail keywords. You notice I also mentioned here, potentially. I can never guarantee your site will rank well in one month, three months, two weeks, potentially, because how much other competition is there? And then there's a couple of ways that we'll do this. The old way, generic keywords, and the new way, the long tail. So I've got here, go to a search engine and plug in a simple keyword from your niche or topic. For the first page of results, write the title and description from each site. I should have said, uh, let's open up Word, or you can use a plain old uh, piece of paper, but if we use Microsoft Word, we can do some copying and pasting. Go to the Start menu, and um, search right here, Word, and that, should load, and that should help you find Microsoft Word 2013. Go ahead and launch the Word software. So you can write some notes, or you can write them on a piece of paper, whichever way you'd like. And let's start Microsoft Word. When you start Word, it might show you uh, what kind of templates would you like to use. We'll just go with the default blank document. We just need somewhere to write on. And at the top, we can write forming a long tail keyword strategy.
and let's save the document. You can click up on that little save icon, that little disk. And I'm going to save this. If you've got a thumb drive, you can save it on your thumb drive. I'm going to select computer and desktop. So I'm saving it to the desktop, whatever name. I'm just saving it as forming a long tail keyword strategy dot docx. Just save your file. If you do snap, I'm going to move my Word window to the right, and then so my instructions. We're going to do some some searching. Ideally, we do this both in Bing and and Google. So I'm just going to demonstrate on Bing, but ideally, you want to do this on both search engines to get a more complete picture. I would go over to Bing. So I've got this web design company. Um, and I would search the simple keywords. Web design. Experience tells me that that's not going to be the best way to search, but the point of this is I want to look at how is this keyword working for for companies. So for the first page of results, write the title and description from each site. And I would say only pay attention to the ones that are real companies. Don't write this down for the Wikipedia article. Don't write it down for GoDaddy. Don't write it down for these sites like Yelp. Try to find a result or two of a real company. And because of such a generic word, you might have a hard time that's okay. We want to see if we find any real company. Avoid the ads also because that's an artificial ranking. My results here, let's see, webdesign.org. That seems to be all about tutorials and such, so no, I'm going to skip that because I'm, that's not what my company is about. I'm trying to sell my web design services. Web.com, choose your small business web design. Um, what's that one about? Website builder web.com you say we build it uh, okay that looks like a client like a real company okay my point is you're gonna see these results you're gonna make notes uh, this is gonna be objective and subjective so first of all objective which means you know like factual dish objectively the name of their website is web.com official site and their address is web.com and they've written some metadata here. This is a description. So in my Word document, I want to make a note of that company. The easiest way is you, you can select, you can drag and select that result and copy it. Copy that result. And then in Word, you want to right click, and I would recommend right click and click that text only option. If you do just a regular copy and paste, it'll bring it with that font size and color and all of this extra stuff that's distracting. So instead, if you right click and choose the option keep text only, it'll give me only the text, which is really what I, what I want to focus on. See that? It put web.com official site, address, and then description. I'm going to make a note here. Site title. Site URL or address. Site description. These three things, how does it go? You only have one you only, you only have one chance to make a first impression. This is the first impression of this particular company. I was searching for web design. I didn't even specify web design companies. But this is one of the highly ranked results from that generic keyword. And I'm seeing that they don't even have the word 
design, web design. It's just called web.com official site. And they don't even have the words web design in their address. Their description says, choose web.com for small business web design and small business website needs. Improve online presence with online marketing services. So the point is, I'm looking at this top result, top organic result. They didn't pay for this result. And I'm seeing, what are they doing that could give me an idea of what I can do, but better? You should be seeing that we don't, we no longer need to have a website named literally what our company's about. A few years ago, we did, because the search engines were dumber. And one of the things that they looked at was, what's your web address? If you've got that web address, you must be about affordable Canadian medication. But nowadays, that is spammy. The search engines are seeing it more and more that it's spammy when you've got this kind of name, especially a really long one. Authentic Italian food restaurant, chulavista.com. That now, guilty by association. Guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. The search engines are going to see it sounds like spam, it looks like spam, it's spam, even though you're not spam. So the point is you don't need your keywords in your address. Don't go out and rush and, and beat yourself up if you can't buy your, your website with your keywords. It's okay. Because what's a Twitter? What's a Facebook? What's a Flickr? What's a Dribble? What's all of these websites that you might have never heard before? You never heard of Facebook. What did you think Facebook was when you first heard it? What did you think Google was when you first heard it? These names nowadays, they don't need to be literal anymore because all the good names are taken by spammers. So just about any name will work nowadays. It's all about the content that you're putting out there, like this description. We'll talk about how to edit this, of course. You notice they hit the keywords small business. I wasn't even searching for that, but it knew that. Small business. Improve presence. Marketing. This, is this on the index page? <laughs> yes, this is on the index page of the this is on the starting page of, of that website. Most likely in the code. Google extract it or the website has to be used? The search engines extract it. I do, and we will do it. Right now, we're just doing the research. What is the competition doing? So I'm seeing a result there, but I'm not done there. I want to also click on the result. Yes, I'm giving them a click. Yes, I might be helping their SEO. But I want to click to see, well, why are they number one? They didn't pay for it. So you are going to click a few of these results. And then objectively and subjectively, you're going to then analyze the site. You might not have all the tools and the language to really put it into into words, but maybe focus more on a subjective level, your opinion about this site. I see that it's nice, it's well designed, it's clean, it's got a lot of stuff, but it's not popping up with pop-ups and sidebars and all of that. It's relatively well designed. Oh, I see something here about security. That's good. I see a big old call us now and a phone number up here and social media. You say it, we build it. Good tagline. It's as easy as web.com. Saw our TV ad. Three easy steps. So I'm looking at this site, and if I have the language, if I have the experience of web design, I might say, I might give opinions about that. But if I don't have that, okay, again, on, a, on, a, on, a, on an opinionated level, what do I like, what don't I like? That's what you're going to be writing down here, as my instructions say. Uh, click three results. Write notes on what each page features. Here's some ideas to think about. When was it updated? Does it have a blog? Is the design modern? Is the site mobile friendly? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? If you try to answer all of those for every site that you research, it should hopefully be giving you a picture. What is the competition doing? I'm not doing that, so that's your first step. I need to do some of these things. Now that I know what the competition is doing, that's my baseline. I need to have my phone number 
easily available. If I keep seeing a trend that a phone number is easily available, I'm not following a trend. So I need a phone number on my website, perhaps. If I'm seeing over and over through my research, everyone's on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. I should tell you something. Get on Twitter. If my website has a bunch of difficult to navigate sidebars and pop-up boxes and the competition doesn't, that's telling you something also. One of the things that I note here is about is the site mobile friendly. Studies show, and you may also see it anecdotally, more and more people are using this as their main computer instead of this. You may not be using this as much as this, but studies show that this that these phones and tablets are becoming more and more used. And very soon, these, if not already, these are surpassing traffic than these laptops and, and, and desktop computers. So it's important. Is your site mobile friendly? Does it look good on, on a mobile device? Have you been to a website on your phone where the text is tiny and you have to zoom in to read it? That's a clear indicator, most likely, that the site is not mobile friendly because I can't even read it. If you visit a site and it's nice and big and fills up the screen and very easy to read, most likely it's mobile friendly. Question in the back, ladies? Question in the back, ladies? Question in the back? Right? Yes? Okay, I, I guess about that site. Does it um, require or ask if you're interested in hearing, like getting a subscribing and leaving your email? It doesn't do that. At least not. That's true. This one's not being obvious about subscribe or put your email. Yeah. So, I, I would do more research to see what the others are doing. This one might not do that, and the other ones do. As I do more of this research, then I can figure out what's the competition doing, should I do that. Oftentimes, a quick way to test if, if something is mobile friendly is on your web browser here, if you stretch, stretch it or shrink it, and if it kind of rearranges itself and it looks nice, it's mobile friendly, this one doesn't seem to be mobile friendly, which is funny. It's number one, but it doesn't seem to be mobile friendly. It gets cut off because a, a normal um, phone is tall and thin like this web browser. Now, it may do other things that if I do visit web.com on my mobile device, it may in other ways detect that it's on mobile and give me the mobile version. I'm going to check that right now, actually. So that's not always the best way to confirm if something is mobile friendly. It's often a quick way to confirm, and I'm trying to check it here and I'm not seeing it. Question? Um, I know that some sites have the m dot and then yeah. the URL. Does that mean that they have a mobile site? Oftentimes, that's one way to do that, yes, that you have m dot web dot com. Um, it's not quite loading up here to confirm. But uh, there's many ways to get your site mobile friendly. The big thing, though, is the search engines, especially Google, have recently said, we're going to start to take much more into account if your site is mobile friendly. So if your site is not mobile friendly, that could be hurting you, especially on Google, because they have explicitly said that's one of the things we're going to pay more attention to. Bing, if they didn't say it officially, they're doing it unofficially because all the search engines are in competition with each other. It's just not loading up to fully check it. Yes? Oh, within taking a class such as this, like doing a little research online, um, and knowing that bit about WordPress, adjustments can be made to your website. Is that correct? Yes. It, it's, it's, if you know what you're doing, you can tweak it, and it'll and yes. any device, so not just like iPhone, Android, all of them. Exactly. So the keyword is responsive. If you've got a responsive website, also known as mobile friendly, if you've got a responsive website or responsive theme, most likely then that will give you that ability. So if you know what you're doing, you can definitely make your, your site mobile friendly. If you don't, we will talk about it. So uh, on my notes, back to Word here, I'm going to make a note right away. It doesn't seem to be mobile friendly. 
What's that? I pulled it up and it looked like it was. Is the readable. is the text readable or is it tiny? It was. Um, well, I moved, I moved off the it. It's just the banners and. Yeah, it's readable. It doesn't look like it's bringing the content, but it's bringing it inside. Okay. It doesn't seem to be mobile friendly. That's why I wrote seem to be. I would do more research to fully confirm that. It's just another real important thing in the internet. If somebody searches you on your mobile device, the key should be made because you want to get the phone number in the description and tagline so that right away if somebody ends up on mobile, all you have to do is what comes up right here in the side. We'll look, we'll look at that also, but the point there that, that he was saying is if you're on a mobile device, most likely you're doing a search because you need something at that moment. Where is that restaurant? So we'll see when we edit our description. We can put our phone number in the description, so when someone searches on the mobile, your phone number is right there and they can click and call you right away. That's by editing the description, which we'll look at. Because I'm on a desktop here, I'm getting slightly different results than I would do on mobile. To fully do this research, I would do the same kind of searching on a mobile device to see how things are different. And this whole exercise, this whole PDF exercise, is researching the competition. If I'm living in a bubble, if I'm trying to optimize, but I'm not checking what the competition is doing, I'm living in a bubble. I need to see what the competition is doing. I will click on a competitor. I will put my ego to the side and try to see what's good about this site, even though they're taking my business. What's good about this site? what can I do better? So you're gonna write as many notes as you can here opinions or if you have it, web design experience write down your comments and I have some starting points again can you find when it was last updated? Most of the time these sites are often ranked highly because they are relevant they are current if a site if two companies create a site a year ago about the same thing but one of them updates it once a month the search engines will say that's a better site to rank than the one that has not been updated in 12 months. So look around to see if you see any new blog posts or a latest copyright date. Most likely you will see new content on the top results. Like a blog. You're not going to add a new product. You're not going to redesign the interface every few months. You're not going to add a brand new About Us paragraph. I don't mean updating it that way. I mean updating it with relevant content. And blogging is one of the best ways to do that. I just finished teaching a blogging class. It was uh, in this room at this time last month. And it's going to be taught again. But blogging is an important aspect of SEO because this is how you put out all of this content for the search engines to pick up on to see your keywords and rank you and to see that you've been updated recently. Remember when I showed a Google search for my company and it saw right there, oh, updated September 22nd. Is a blog separate from your website or can you blog on your website? You can blog on your website, definitely. Either way, you, it's about putting content online. So here it saw, oh, there was a new update, September 22nd. So it wants you, the search engines want you to be current and new and relevant, and blogging is a way to do that. What about um, blogging from your website and then having an external blog? That works too. That works too. It's better to have your blog directly integrated on your site, so pmdinteractive.com slash blog, or blog.pmdinteractive. That's better. But if I have pmd.wordpress.com, that's fine, as long as I also direct my traffic from that site back to my main site, which is an extra step. So if you have it directly on your site, better. Question? In short, no, that's not going to help you as much as, as blogging. In the blogging class, we had a full class 
where people were also saying, I, I don't know what to blog about. My site doesn't have enough content. We talked about everyone's sites and all together we thought of like five things we could talk about for everyone. So you might not think you have a lot of content to blog about, but we can brainstorm during the lab and such if you'd like to. We had the class where we did that for everyone. You know, people that had handmade textiles, well, what would I blog? What are the stories behind the textiles, the patterns? What are testimonials? What are the real people that have bought this? Where have I shipped to? There's lots of things that we can talk about on a regular basis. I have this client that's a restaurant, another one, a Mexican food restaurant. How could you possibly blog about that? The Mexican food there is not the usual tacos and California burritos. It's authentic Mexican food from Mexico City with a history and a culture behind it. We write about that. We write about the, the, the stories behind the food and so forth. So there is plenty, if we do think hard, about what we can write about for just about every company. Because it's not going to be enough to add a new link to the home page. It's not going to be enough to add a new thing on the about page. Everything else, 99% is the same. So you do want to blog. And we'll see it's not as hard as it could be. In the blog class, we talked about a good goal is once a month, 100 words. That's very doable to possible to do. You're going to see you're going to get into 100 words very easily once a month. Great. Just one moment, yes. A little bit links. Are those still important? From your site to another site? Yes. And if you have another site linked securely in front of I, We're going to talk on, a, on another day about links. Uh, the short answer is that backlinks are more important. If you, don't know, if you don't know what that means, we've got a day that we'll talk about it. Just uh, one moment. You here? I just have a quick question about the um, mega tags. Can you have more of them? In other words, if you are you have an Italian restaurant and you advertise, that's your presence. Uh, but if you want to say it's now October and you know Halloween is coming, can you put something uh, a mega tag under Halloween uh, Italian costume party? Well, the, the literal, we have meta description and meta tag. Those literal ones aren't as valuable as having those keywords throughout your site. But the idea is about using the keywords of Halloween and such is a very good idea. When we, when we do that, we'll see it's not as important to put those tags into the literal meta tag box it's just that we use those keywords throughout our site, and we'll see how that makes sense when we do it. Question? Mm, very little, because hashtags really make more sense in a social network, and I teach a class about all the social networks. So in that class, we will get much more detail into hashtags. But in a sense, hashtags are keywords, and keywords are important on our site. So we touch on them, but really in the social media class we talk about hashtags more in detail. So as long as you want to, as long as you have time for, you would do this. You would research the competition with your old generic keywords, the non-specific keywords. Then you would do the same thing with your long tail. But then notice it says, in a clean search engine, search for a long tail keyword from your niche. Well, we know that the long tail keyword is right is searching for authentic Brazilian. Uh, what's authentic in Brazil? Uh, macadamia nut mm -hmm. cookie recipes. I don't know. We search for something very specific. In a clean search engine means, see my footnote down here. A clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies and browsing history before using the search engine. This will give you more accurate results. I recommend having a web browser just for these types of searches. If your main browser is Chrome, for example, use Firefox when you need to search. Each browser is different. You'll have to know how you can reset yours. This, important, this is important to get results like how your potential visitors or customers would. People come all the time to these classes and say, I search for these keywords, and I appear number one. And I say, are you searching on your home computer? They say, yes. And I said, your home computer is helping you find your own site. Because the more you use your own web browser, the more it helps you find the sites that you care about. 
So if you're searching these keywords and clicking on your own link over and over on your own computer, it's going to obviously show you your own results. But your potential client that has <coughs> never searched for you before is going to get a very different set of results because they don't have those cookies, they don't have that search history that your computer has. So I have a couple of things and I forgot to mention it here, but we've got clean your cookies, reset your browser, you know, start on the same play level playing field as your, com as your potential customers. I, I'm not going to get into, go into here and click here and clean your search engine. This is kind of stuff that you should know or figure out. You can always look up, how do I reset Firefox? Guess what? Use a search engine to find an answer. But the point is, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to use a web browser that has been cleaned out. The problem with that is, you don't want to clean out your browser where you've stored your, your bank password or your email password. A lot of us use our web browser where we've all, we're always logged into our Gmail. So when you go to Gmail, you're already in. If you clean out your browser, it's going to ask you to log in. And a lot of you have gotten used to simply being logged into Google, so what's my password? So I'm saying don't do that to your main browser. You can get a free Firefox browser, free Chrome, free Safari. They're all free. If your main browser is Safari on your Mac, get Firefox to do this. If your main browser is Internet Explorer, get Chrome to do this. If your main browser is Chrome, use Internet Explorer. Just use a different web browser than your usual one, where it's okay that you're nuking it, that you're erasing all the cookies and logins and passwords. And you want that clean browser because that'll give you the most accurate results, like a person that has never searched you before. I forgot to mention it here, but there's also a value in using your web browser in private mode. Depending on your web browser, you might have something called incognito mode, or it might be called private browsing. Look up how to use your web browser, and you will see something called private browsing which means it won't remember your history and your cookies. And that's a little bit more like a clean search engine. I'm totally paranoid. I'm going to clean my browser out completely and then use private browsing so that there's no history, so that I, it doesn't give away my location and that it doesn't store my history of browsing and searching and that I get results that are much more accurate like a real person searching my company. Once you've got a clean browser, then do the, the activity again, but focusing in on the long tail keywords. Authentic Italian food, Chula Vista. Affordable web designers in Eastlake. Get more specific and do the same thing. Check their title, check their description, write some notes. Do they have social media? Do they have contact information? What feature do they have that my company doesn't? What trends do I see that they have that mine doesn't? Maybe I'm seeing a lot of websites that have a nice, big, beautiful slideshow showing the product, and mine doesn't. That could be something that I could incorporate on my site. Not that I want your site to look like your competitors, but what are they doing that you could do within reason because it seems to be working for them? After you've done your research, it's time to write 10 simple keywords and 5 complete phrases, the long tail. And when we get to it in class, we'll see where do I plug them in? How do I use them? But you need to know your company. That's that company profile. You need to research your competition. That's this activity. And then it's time to incorporate on all, all our knowledge directly on the site. That's why I say, next week, come with your login information so that we can do it. By researching your competition, you are seeing what works for them. You are defining what sets you apart and what you have to offer in contrast to the competition, the why of it all. You, uh, you will use your long tail keywords throughout your site, in posts and pages, for example, but you will also create content that fits the overall theme of your site. You will become an authority in the field you're, you've targeted. That's another thing we'll talk in detail. A lot of these sites are number one because they have a lot of authority. They have a lot of content that they're putting out there they're the go-to for some search. We want to become an authority. We'll see how. You will create content on a regular basis, like blogging or social media, and you will spread this content through the internet, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And if you get the book, the optional book, read the section on quality content, quality content, which is what 
the search engines look at nowadays. It's a lot to take in, but you have a week to look at it. When we come back next week, because we're going to do lab time now, when you come back next week, if you have any questions, we'll answer them in class, and I'll have more handouts and theory and practice and activity. But modern SEO is a big ball of wax. It's not just about keywords, put them in your meta tags. It's a lot of things. That's why it's a four-week class. And even in a four-week class, we won't be able to learn everything because it's always changing. And you might have particular needs that don't apply to you. That's so why we have lab time. Any general questions about anything we talked about today? Oftentimes my answer is, we're going to talk about it. But any general questions? Yes? I just have one question about um, sharing um, or resetting the, the browser. browser. Is it possible you can just open up a new uh, website just for that activity, that setting up your, uh, you know, your website? A new Presence. window? A new uh, window? It's called a window. Yeah. yeah, that still wouldn't be the same. Go ahead. Yeah, applying for a new window. Well, opening a new window like this still has all my history. It's all integrated. So I still would clean out the browser or go into private mode. One really extreme way to do this is go to Best Buy, go to Fry's or Target, or some place where they have computers there, computers connected to the Internet. Do a search on those computers that you've never used before that have no history there of you to get some intel that way also. Obviously, I'm not going to drive to Best Buy every time to do it, but that's another way to, to see what are people seeing besides from my browser. Question? Just one moment. Yes. They are as soon as you turn them on because then they've been erased with all cookies and everything. Yes. Um, the, technically, the web browser is cleaned of the cookies, yes. Yes, you want to clean those cookies out, um, because, and, but that's not enough. There's cookies and there's history. You do want to clean them both out because that's your whole profile. You're not going to get the most accurate results like someone searching your, your For You brand new. You just want to have the most clean slate to work with. Yes, but be careful because you, you might also be cleaning your bank password, let's say, and you don't want to lose that. So that's why you can use another browser as your workhorse for doing the, the searching. All right, so we'll end at this point. We'll do a little bit of lecture, and we'll do it again next.